Thank you, Reverend Gaitri. And now we'll hear from Pastor Exton Clark, President of the Ghana Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Protocols uh, already established. I want to, good afternoon, everyone. I want to commend His Excellency for this very novel and noble initiative. And we are happy to be part of this significant event. And I'm happy to share with you a few thoughts on true fasting. We have a time limit, so I'll do some surgery to what I prepared, actually. Um, but I wanted to direct your attention to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 58, which endorses fasting, but the fasting that leads to faithfulness. God made it clear that fasting is not just about going through the motions. It's about realizing a spiritual makeover. The passage of scripture points out the fact that Israel called upon God and he did not answer because they wanted to be blessed without following God's blueprint. Fasting is not just a physical posture. It is a spiritual pursuit. The Bible points out in Isaiah 58 verses 2 and 3 that Israel fasted, but God did not take notice. You see, their fasting was hypocritical. It did not lead to humility. In Isaiah 58, 3 to 5, it points out what God categorically rejected was a fast that makes people more crooked, more oppressive, more covetous, more selfish. God made it clear as to the outcome of their fast. He said, you fast for strife and debate to smite the fist of, the, of wickedness and taking advantage of your laborers. You see, true fasting does not push only rituals. It pedestalizes a relationship with God. And I'm suggesting today, brothers and sisters, that our deprivations of certain physical needs must serve to deepen our devotion to God. Of course, Jesus was very clear about that outcome when he declared in Matthew 5, 50, 15 verse 8, when he said, rebuke the Pharisees, when he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And I want to submit today that when we pray as a people, we can only know that our prayer is answered if there is a change in me, if after praying and fasting, you're still filled with hatred and bitterness and antagonism and pride and injustice and, and, and evil still reigns in the heart, then you had a self-imposed famine, not a spiritual fast. Fasting does not end with rituals. It ends with righteousness. Let me, let, me, let me just, I had so much to say, but let me just take two or three more minutes and, and just wrap it up. But true fasting produces Christ-likeness. That's what we believe as Christians, not callousness. Isaiah 58, 6 to 8, out, God outlines to Israel the fast that is acceptable to him. It's not a fast that, that results you know, in, in, in public posturing, but a fast. A fast that, res that, that results in practical religion. You see, the way you process determines what you produce. God said, my ultimate fast in, in Isaiah 58, 6 to 8, is to loose the bands of wickedness. To undo heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. To deal thy bread to the hungry, help the poor, clothe the naked. Brothers and sisters, I believe today... In order for religion to be real, it must be relevant. James 1.27 references pure religion as attending to the needs of the socially deprived, the fatherless, the widows. Irrespective of color, irrespective of class, 
irrespective of culture, irrespective of context and circumstances. This was the essence of Jesus' ministry. You see, religion does not limit people. It liberates people. Are you there with me? When we come to God, it should impact our characters. Are you, are you listening to me? God said to Israel, you ain't fast yet until you see the fruits of my fashioning. When we develop the character of God, we will reflect his characteristics. The reality is, and I'm winding down, the reality is, we cannot get it right with others until we get it right with God. Watch this. A society cannot be healed unless the human heart becomes humble. The Bible says in James 4.10, Humble yourselves before, before the Lord and he will exalt you. And Mr. President, I want to suggest that a country cannot experience oneness by virtue of its wealth, but rather by the wealth of its virtues. Fa fasting, fasting must be the fuel for a feast of forgiveness, respect, com compassion, honor, pride, harmony, peace, religious, religious tolerance, unity, and love. When this is achieved, Isaiah 58, 8 says, we will access the glory of the Lord, which shall rest on our beautiful country. The Apostle Paul says we are one blood. And if we are one blood, there is no reason why we cannot experience one Guyana. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Clark. You, made, you made, almost made me want to burst out in song, but I'll hold back. I'll hold back. All right. Uh, we're now going to welcome the messengers who will um, give us a song, after which we'll invite Bishop Patrick Finlay to pray. Welcome the messengers. Uh, you guys could take this mic if you like. Okay, yeah. yeah? You want the... You want Without 
it's an alibi The true severity of Jesus made no attempt to lie With all the foes against her, how she felt so all alone Till Jesus asked the people who would throw the first stone He was teaching the truth in love, telling it like it is, while holding pure motives and showing that he cared. Are we teaching the truth in love? Directly do we dare? Should we water down the message? Should we tell them only part? Will they see him in our message? Will they see him in our hearts? Are we teaching the truth in love? Telling it like it is. We holding you motives, showing that we care. Are we teaching the truth? Are we teaching the truth in love? Telling it like it is. Are we holding you? That we care, are we teaching the truth? Are we teaching the truth? Are we teaching the truth?